when you look past, I pray, and the Lord showed me that she was healed, but I told her, get a second opinion, you know, using conventional wisdom. She didn't do it. She paid attention to a conventional doctor. They took the thyroid out, and it they was... They took her thyroid out? She didn't have any cancer anyway. She lost her thyroid. Okay, well, that's that's one of the most tragic things that I see as a healthcare professional is people with no thyroid. And no. if you have your thyroid removed for, unless you, for something that's not cancerous, in other words, if you have your thyroid removed because it's hyperactive, which is typically what, the reason people remove their thyroid because of Graves' disease or, or hyperactive thyroid, hyperthyroidism, you know, I want to say it's criminal. I don't want to, it really is. I don't know how a doctor can do that. You know, I don't want to be alarmist here and all dramatic, but I don't know how a doctor can justify this. I don't know how a doctor can live with themselves for removing this unbelievably important structure in the body. It's hard to say. Okay, so I don't want to get in that because just, that's just going to make me mad. Without a thyroid, you're incredibly compromised. Incredibly compromised. Please, aside from your friend, hang on just a second, Rose. Aside from your friend, if you're even thinking remotely about removing your thyroid for anything less than cancer, please, please do not do it. And if your you doctor is suggesting it, fire him. Get rid of him. Don't ever see him again. It's awful. Hyperthyroidism is an autoimmune disease, and it needs to be addressed mostly an autoimmune disease, and it needs to re be addressed in that fashion, not by removing the darn organ or the, or the gland, I should say. But she didn't have cancer, but... I know, they, I know. They, 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 it was healed, but it was too late. She lost the, the Okay, viral. all right. Well, I don't want to get into that because there's nothing we could do. You can't put it back in. Yeah. It's gone. Now, high cholesterol. She said yes. she has 366. Oh, yeah, yeah. Her whole body's going to be messed up. All her metabolic markers are going to be messed up without a thyroid. She can't clear cholesterol. She can't process cholesterol. Her liver isn't going to work correctly. Her digestive system isn't going to work correctly. She doesn't have a thyroid. It's like having a, a car with no carburetor or no fuel injector. It's like the regulating system of the body is now gone. So everything is going to be thrown off. So this is a woman and anybody else, by the way, who's listening to this, who's had a thyroid removed. You're not going to put it back in, obviously. But what you can do is you can take extra super duper, pay extra super duper attention to your body. Really be vigilant about everything you do to your body without a thyroid. You have to do it anyway, but without a thyroid, you got to do it even more vigilantly. She should be eating as little as possible. Without a thyroid, your ability to process food, digest food, clear and purify food is going to be majorly compromised. You're going to run risks for all kinds of horrible diseases. So the less you put in, the, in your body, the better. And that means nutritionally supplementing. It's vital that you nutritionally supplement if you do not have a thyroid. You're still not going to... You're still not going to be able to get maximum benefits from your supplement, but from your supplements, but you'll mitigate the damage. You'll reduce the damage that's done by your so-called medical professional. Now, if you have cancer, that's different. But other than cancer, if you've had your thyroid taken out, you're in a world of hurt. That means you have to pay very close attention to everything you're doing. Very close. It's like having a baby who's, uh, who's uh, crippled. Your body is like a baby, and now your body slash baby is crippled. So what do you do? Well, first of all, aside from eating less food, you want to make sure that you're eating less sugar and less bread and less pasta and less rice and potatoes. Again, these are things we all have to do. But hang, hang on. Let me finish here, Rose. These are things we all have to do, but your friend has to do it with more vigilance. You have to be ultra, ultra conscious about calming the body down. Without a thyroid, you're already running on adrenal energy, which is your body's stress energy. So any kind of distress in the body is going to really be th throw the body into, into uh, uh, emergency, emergency mode, and you have to be very careful, calming the body down with massages and hot tubs and relaxation techniques, and most importantly, or, or, or urgently. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Before we went to break, we are talking about what you do without a thyroid. you got to do the same thing everybody has to do, except you have to do it with more vigilance. Focus on digestive health. Caloric restriction is urgent. The, thi the thyroid regulates digestive health. The more you eat, the more greater the burden is on the body anyway, but without a thyroid, it's really high. 
So uh, make sure you're eating as little as possible. Certainly make sure you're restricting your intake of sugar. Again, these are things we all have to do. You're reducing your intake of fast-burning carbohydrates, things that turn into sugar, bread, pasta, cereal, all the things we talk about. Make sure you're slow, deep breathing as often as you can think about it, certainly two or three times a day, one or two or three minutes each time. And then uh, making sure you're doing everything you could do to activate the relaxation nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, the, the, the rest and digest and healing nervous system. That means massages and yoga and aside from the deep breathing technique, progressive relaxation and Tai Chi and anything, you, hot tubs, hot baths, anything you could do to relax the musculature, certainly emotional and mental strategies are important as well. It's the same thing we all have to do, but you have to do it with extra extra vigilance. If you have your thyroid, do not, I repeat, do not let anybody take it out unless you have cancer, unless it's carcin uh, unless it's, uh, unless there's tumors or there, there's some kind of uh, uh, carcin uh, uh, cancer going on in the gland itself. You want to keep that super uber important thyroid gland, certainly not for, for Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. That's not a reason to take your thyroid out. Okay. I hope I helped you out, Rose. Thanks so much. And God bless you and your friend. All right, time to talk to our guests, Robin Shea, star of the PBS and Paula Dean Network, 8020, uh, 8020 with Robin Shea, cooking 8020 with Robin Shea. She's also the author of the new ebook, Reinvent Your Life, Four Steps to Change. We're going to talk about winterizing your workout. Welcome to the Bright Side, Robin Shea. How you doing? Good morning. Hi. Hi, Ben. I love you. I love that you address the parasympathetic nervous system. That oh, nice. so up my alley. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you, Robin. Yes, we talk about the, the rest and digest nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system and sympathetic overdrive all the time on the bright side. So thank you for acknowledging that. So yeah. what's, what's up? I've been working out my whole life, or my whole adult life anyway, and uh, I never thought of winterizing my workout. So what's up with, with winter as opposed to summer, or spring, or fall in terms of exercise? Well, let me tell you, Ben, I have one teacher in my life, and that is Mother Nature she lays out the best template for us to follow. If we were just more astute students, um, we would have just the perfect navigational system. I love it. Mother That's... Nature truly is a navigational system, and I'll give you a really great example. Let's take onions, for instance. Okay. She provides us with a variety of onions. We have spring and summer onions, and they are generally milder in flavor, higher in water content. I relate everything back to food as a cook. So spring and summer onions are perfect for salad, sandwiches, to top on your hamburger because they're a little milder in flavor, so you can eat them raw. But let's say the, the weather starts to change. Well, Mother Nature accommodates, and she provides us with a fall and winter onion, mm. which are a little less in water content, much higher in flavor, so they're perfect for stews and roasting dishes. Comfort foods. Comfort foods. So Mother Nature recognizes that variety is the spice of life. Uh -huh. And that if we just take the same approach with our fitness, that we can do a couple things. We can avoid some overuse injuries, and we can also avoid becoming stagnant and stale in our workout. Now, I personally have always had a workout regimen that rotated with the season. So, for instance, in the summer months, I'm a kayaker, I'm a biker, I'm a runner, um, and love my, my outdoor activities in, I'm sorry, in the summer months. In the winter months, I train in my gym. I own a gym and train women all year long. Um, but I take it outdoors in the summer. I bring it indoors in the winter. Okay, so now one the of work the things that I teach, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. One of the things I teach my students is to, if they can't make it to the gym or if the inclement weather is outside and they just can't work out outside, always have a backup plan, both in your fitness and your nutrition. So I have three tips that I'm going to share to winterize your workout. You ready for these? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number one, I love a subscription service. I subscribe to something called Guyam TV. I know Guy. Guy I'm, I'm going to. You know, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know him really well, actually. You know Jay? Jay White? He's been on the program. He's a good friend. Yes, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's I interesting. I love Guy M. And Guy M TV. Guy M TV. G A I M. Guy M TV. They're out of uh, Broomfield, Colorado, right here in my neck of the woods. That's right. That's right. And I love Guy M because they literally have hundreds. Of workouts ranging from Tai Chi to yoga nice. to um, even your body resistant workouts. So regardless of your fitness level, 
you can find something to accommodate accommodate your lifestyle. Plus, they offer, I believe, a two-week free subscription, so you can test it out without a, a, a huge commitment up, for, up front to make sure that that's a, an avenue that you want to travel. And that's just GuyMTV.com. GuyMTV.com, absolutely. And, and okay. I, I love them. I've been a subscriber for years to GuyM. But, of course, if you don't want to pay subscription, you can go the route of DVDs or apps. My, my main point here is have something in home that you can do to pump that blood through your body and help your circulatory system deliver the nutrition that it needs to function at its optimal level. So that's my, that's my number one tip. My number two tip, when the weather starts to change, so the end of summer, beginning of fall, if you don't have a gym membership, you might consider a gym membership, but it's important that you get into the gym and familiarize yourself with the lay of the land, test the classes, dip your toe in the water, so to speak. Um, because if you have some gym intimidation, which many of mm. us do, uh, you don't want to wait until the winter sets in before you consider going to the gym. Because now you're dealing with a couple more factors. Not only is the weather demotivating, but now you have some intimidation. So that may be enough to stop you. What do you think into the gym? What do you think about using things like resistance bands at home kind of things for people who don't like to go to the gym doing kind of workouts at home easy to easy to implement workouts using exercise bands and and various resistance kinds of devices? Oh, I love that. The main thing is just move that blood through your body. Yeah. I don't care if you stand in place in March. Rebounder? You know, you know about rebounders? Yeah, Mini trampolines? Rebounders are fantastic. I have two rebounders at my gym. Nice. Anything that is going to move your blood through your body at a faster pace than you're, than you're used to for um, 20 minutes minimum, uh, five days a week. It is so medicinal, far beyond just the physicality of your muscle tone and muscle structure. But for your brain health, you mentioned deep breathing earlier. That is the only way that we can, uh, through those deep breathing exercises, a lot of people will tell you to meditate. But the science behind meditation is the oxygenation of that prefrontal cortex. And once we get that oxygen on that prefrontal cortex and we switch into that parasympathetic nervous system, we are tapping into our willpower reservoir. Wow, and just we by breathing. And elevate our living. Just by breathing. Now, let me see if I understood, uh, understand what you just said. Just by oxygenation or by deep breathing, oxygenating the, the prefrontal cortex, you can enhance willpower? You can enhance, absolutely, you can enhance. So for quitting, for quitting, you, for quitting things? Just a little bit further. Well, hang on, we got to take a break, Rob, and I want to hear what you have to say. We'll take a quick commercial. I want you to talk about okay. if, if we can use oxygenation. I hadn't thought of that. Deep breathing techniques to quit smoking or, or to quit addictive behaviors. Hang on, Rob, and we'll be right back. We're talking to Robin Shea, uh, 8020, Cooking 8020 with Robin Shea, and the author of the new ebook, Reinvent Your Life Four Steps to Change. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're talking to Rob and Shay. Cooking 8020 with Robin Chaser show on the Paula Dean Network and also the author of the new ebook, Reinvent Your Life Four Steps to Change. Robin, before I forget, give out your website real quick if people want to buy the book or look into your work. Well, absolutely. And Ben, just so you know, today the release of the ebook for your listeners is it, complimentary. So if they go to robinshay.com backslash ebook, they will not only get some fantastic recipes. But they will also get the release of the new ebook. So robinshay.com oh, backslash ebook. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate that. Robinshay.com backslash ebook. That's right. That's okay, right. Go, so go ahead. Before we uh, before we went to break, we were, we were talking about uh, what were we talking about here? You were in the middle of saying something, and I forgot what that was. We were before. talking about oxygenating that prefrontal cortex, but we were ah, yes, for addictive behavior, for literizing, literizing our workout. For addiction, though, you were saying that and that's kind of intriguing to me. So, in other words, if you want to quit something, oxygenation of the prefront prefrontal cortex, deep breathing can help. Absolutely, because as you mentioned earlier, we have we have our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system. Due to the stress level that most of us live under, 
We are operating most of the time from our sympathetic nervous system, which shunts right. a lot of the blood and oxygen away from our brain and into our extremities, away from our stomach and our organs and into our arms and legs for a quick reaction, even though our threats are not external threats. They're hmm. typically internal threats. Our uh, bills. Because of a little wacky way that we perceive it, we're perceiving it as an external threat, so our sympathetic nervous system is reacting as such. When we calm our breathing down, 